Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm glad you've joined us again this week. We are here in Sacramento, California at the Western States Horse Expo. And I have with me a guest that has been a huge part of my life for a long, long time, Mr. John Lyons. John, thanks for being with us. Oh, Ken, you're always welcome. We are going to discuss things of the past and things of the future in both of our lives coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source And you dream about the moment When you leave it all behind and Climb up on that one true horse That one true horse The perfect partner built to ride that cannot be denied You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse Gonna take a ride on one true horse Very few people ever get to really live the dreams they start out to live. I can tell you that at 15 years old, I knew I'd be in your living room today. At 15 years old, I didn't know that RFD TV would exist, but I had a goal that I would someday be in the living rooms of the horse people around America. That goal would have stayed just a dream without the help of a few very important people. I needed someone to teach me what I didn't know. I chose a man that eventually became known as America's most trusted horseman. The first day I walked into a symposium and sat down, I was in Clemson, South Carolina. Within 15 minutes of sitting down, I knew that I was someplace that I had never been before. I listened as this man changed people's lives, and it was incredible to me, and it, it, it's really given me the background to become who I am today. And he just all of a sudden walks in and says, Dad, I want to go to a John Lyons apprenticeship program. He wanted me to watch one of John's very earliest um, basic round pen videos. And in that video, uh, it, it, was, it was great. And that was what convinced me that it was all right for Ken to go to John Lyons because he paused frequently to compare what that horse was learning with how God has taught him things over his lifetime. And by the time I had watched that film, I knew this is a man I can trust my son with. John, in these expos, I always think about the first time I was involved in any of these kind of events uh, was with you. You know, uh, really in the symposiums early on, before the expos, you've seen some huge changes in the equine industry uh, as you have watched it grow from your shows and other shows like that to these major events. What do you think, where do you think we're going? Well, I think, uh, Ken, is, is educationally wise, what we're doing and what these shows do and what all the DVDs and the, and the books and the and RFD TV and, and the different programs, what they do is they make the education more available uh, and the knowledge more available to so many more people. So I think, you know, if you look around, even as you see posters, you know, around the expo here, you look up and you see uh, posters of people riding horses and snaffle bears. They never used to do that, you know? Right. And, and so that comes from education, that comes from teaching people that there's a better way to handle these horses, it isn't just force, et cetera. So education is always better than equipment. And, and the expos, the clinics like that you give, that, that I have given over the years, and, and all the other clinicians, we're just spreading you know, good education. And so that changes people's lives and, and the more knowledge, you know, um, I forgot what president said it, but he said you cannot raise the level of your own boat 
without raising the level of all the boats, right? Right. So as we learn more, then we spread that knowledge out and all the water comes up and everybody gets gets along better, you know, with with their horses. You know, you see at any at any expo, you see problems that have always been there and always will be there. But I do I do believe you see a lot higher level of horsemanship on the higher side than you across the board than you used to see. You know, oh, it, for sure you do. You know, I mean, you can't watch like the Mustang Challenge, and and not just say, "Wow, those guys are doing great." You know, right. I mean, hundred days into training, and you see all they can do, and you think, "God, I can should be able to do that. I can do that." <laughs> you know, and so it inspires you. And so, what great horsemanship does for other people is show them what's possible. So it's just great to see trainers, young trainers old trainers, uh, people get inspired to do more. We've talked about, we hit a little bit, where are we going? So I want to go back a little bit. And um, I'm, what got you started in teaching clinics? What, what created in you the, the desire to come out and why did you start teaching clinics? I was broke. <laughs> you know, necessity. I was, yeah, it was a necessity, you know, and, and I enjoyed the people more than I did just training the horses. That was pretty boring. And I needed to make a living. So when I started giving clinics, you know, it was just to help people. I loved the, the change that you saw in people, you know, when they did something different with their horse. I mean, it was the coolest thing to be able to help them, get them going a direction where they they started having fun with their horse or they started enjoying their horse. And so it was out of necessity. I needed to eat, but I was, in a way, I wanted to do something that I loved doing. And I loved the horses. And I had people coming to me because I was showing horses at the time as well. And so I already had people coming and saying, well, how did you get that horse to do that? And so that's what made sense to me. And my dad you know, said, it'll never work. <laughs> you know, my dad said, this ain't ever going to work. People are never going to come to you to learn how to train a horse, you know. And why would they do that? Why would they pay good money, you know, to learn how to train a horse? <laughs> and so you have to learn to not hear those things. Mm -hmm. You have to learn sometimes to say, no, this is where my heart is. This is what I want to do. This is something that I truly enjoy doing. I, I love playing with the people, you know, and I loved helping the people. When I go back to uh, when I first met you, one of the things that drew me and, and gave me the desire uh, was, of course, uh, the bridalist work you did with Zip. But more than that, uh, that was one of the things that amazed me once I, once I got to know you a little bit. But the idea that you actually ranched for a living. <clears throat> there was a time in your life when you ranched and, and used your horse every single day. And I think that's one of those things that today a lot of years later, a lot of people have forgot. But you guys did run cattle in the mountains in Colorado, right? Uh, I did for sure. I even, you know, I mean, I, I had 350 uh, cow-calf operation, and, and, uh, and I loved it. That's what I wanted to do. I just couldn't afford to do it, you know. I didn't have enough money to get started in it, but I did. And I didn't have enough money to buy the ranch, but I did. I had, and, and then we hit, you know, a 100-year drought and interest rates went to 22%. So financially, I was dead before I ever got started. Sure. But I, I hung on for that three or four years, and I just loved it. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted, I wanted to be a cowboy. I wanted to l live, you know, in the mountains, and and I got to do that. So come forward from there, because that to me was, well, you've had lots of great horses. When people think of John Lyons, they just naturally think of John Lyons and Zip. You know, that relationship that developed there, that's really been the foundation, the springboard for what you've done for the last 30 years. Oh, it really was. And uh, uh, Zip and I, you know, I, I spent more time with Zip than I did any other living thing on earth. You know, I depended on that horse. Uh, I depended on him to get a certain job done when there was no one else around. And there were times, you know, that that came in 
certainly handy, you know, in clinics and expos. There were so many moments, you know, over the years that I just depended on him, right. you know? I mean, I counted on him, you know, just like you and I, where, you know, I feel like I could call you and no matter where you would be, no matter what you would do, I could count on you. If I needed you, that I could count on you. That was a relationship, and I would want you to feel the same way, is that that is a relationship that you always are trying, you know, to establish. The thing that stands out the most to me you know, about my dad is the time he took with, the, with every individual, the amount of effort he put into it, the tenacity that he had to go out and, and keep going. So outside of me, you have mentored lots of people. What is it like for you to sit back now and, and see this Oh, upside down pyramid, if you will, of all of these people who have exploded from you and gone out and done things. What's it like for you to, to look at that whole picture now? It's, you know, it's certainly gratifying. It's actually two or three generations down. It's where somebody, where you helped somebody, who helped somebody, who said, wow, you know, and, it, and, the, and the knowledge goes on. It wasn't just on one horse, one person, and then a dead end. And our job is important. It helps define who we are. It, it helps define the type of person that we are and what's important to us. But really, as I get older, what I find is that what really defines me is my relationship with people. Our job is the least important thing in our life because it always disappears. But really what stays is the relationship that you have built with people over the years, who you are, the type of person you are, and then your core, you know, which is your family. We don't want to get it out of balance and think, well, it's most important that I'm the, I'm the biggest, fanciest, most important trainer in the country. It's certainly not the most important that I make the most money, you know, or I make a lot of money because all that's going to disappear. So we put our, our stock in the wrong thing. What I really want to do is I want to be able to say, keep the priorities right. Understand that, God, when all this goes away, right. it's just going to be Jody holding my hand, you know? Just going to be Josh and you and, and Michael and Katie and, and my kids, you know, that say, God, Dad, I still love you. Even yeah. though, you know, even though, Dad, you're not perfect. Even though, Dad, you're not the famous trainer. It'll never end the fact that I'm constantly trying to make my dad proud of me, which to me shows how strong our relationship is and, and what a great person he is. He doesn't care if I was a horseman or not. All he cares about is that I was happy doing with whatever I was doing and I put 100% effort into it. His devotion has taught me a lot of different things in my life as far as, you know, to school work, to, to the horse training, to family. Um, it just, a lot of things helped me in my life overall. Well, my dad, John Lyons, is known as America's most trusted horseman. And what he has done for the industry, he has changed it in several different ways. He has changed not only the, the horse training, but the way people look at trainers and, and clinicians. What makes me feel good about the industry? God, there's so many cool things that I see changed, you know? Right. And I, I like to feel like, you know, that I had a small part in that. But most importantly, I hope what I've done is right with my family, with myself, right. as a person, you know, right. as a person. When, you know, when I say, who are you, John, that I come back with an answer that I like. Right. You know, as a person. And you know, that honestly probably leads me to the most important part of John Lyons. And that is in years and years and years of being in public, you have never separated your faith from your business. And that's an example to many of us, you know, and, and the Bible clearly tells us as godly men and women to set examples to those who are younger and following along. But 
now that I am in shoes that are beginning to feel the pressure you felt, I know that's not really easy. How have you kept that one solid flowing piece? I've never tried to be different. You know, I've never tried to be different behind the barn than I was out in front. When I walk out into an, an audience of whatever it was, whether it's two people or, or 10,000, and I've been in, in both of those situations, I'm really just talking to my friends. Right. You know, I'm just talking, whether it's 10,000 horse owners there or whether there was uh, one, you know, I would never say or do anything to them that I, and do it to the horse, you know, in front of them if I wouldn't do it, you know, behind the barn. So I, I try, I'm just me. You know, I understand that God has been my very best friend on earth and he has done so much for me through the years and, and, and so much for me. If he never did anything for me on earth, you know, in my earthly life, the one thing he did do is he gave me a chance to have eternity in heaven. Wasn't that enough? If he never answered one prayer, if he never, you know, did anything to help me in my career, if da 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 da, if he never did anything, wasn't what he did for me enough? And shouldn't I always try to think of him? So I wouldn't do, I wouldn't want to, even though I have, I'm sure, I wouldn't want to do things that would hurt that friendship. You know? So I'm just me. One last question. You have done amazing things. Two years ago here, uh, I was thrilled to participate in inducting you into the California Horseman's Hall of Fame. You've been inducted into the Appaloosa Horse Hall of Fame. You have done amazing things all across the country and, and changed the face of American horse industry for sure. Earned the title America's Most Trusted Horseman. What are you up to? What are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm still playing. I, I feel, figured out I was riding, started a new horse in January, and I'm riding this horse, and all of a sudden, I get this coolest idea. What if when I'm asking the horse to turn to the left, what if I move the hip to the left first, even from the very beginning? Well, cow, it was like a, it was the coolest thing. You know, it really changed my horse training. And so I was doing an expo down in, in Tucson not long after that about 30 days after that, and I'm, I'm all excited about what I'm doing, and I'm, I'm telling these, these trainers, a couple of the, the certified trainers, I'm telling them about it, I'm trying to explain it to them, and they said, John, that is really cool. Where did you come up with this stuff? And, you know, how do you do that? And I thought, I don't know, I just, just well, do it. just did it. So I was thinking about it, and I'm thinking, do you know what, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in the hospital, I'm gonna be just about dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just about going to be in my last breath, and I'm going to say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, wait. I've got an idea. What if we did this a little <laughs> di different with the rain, you know? So, so what am I up to? I'm just playing at home. I'm having a great time at home because I'm getting to spend a lot more time at home. I'm doing some privates, which I love doing the privates. I really like that. That is just like ice cream to me because I can just so much focus on one person, and we get to ride together, and I just... I really, really like that. So I get to do some privates and I sprinkle that in uh, every once in a while. And then I get to play in my bulldozers, my track hose, and I get to build fence and, and do stuff I really like doing. So, so I get to do that and I get to mix in some of the expos and some of the riding. And, and I get to go, uh, just like last year when we came up and rode with you and did the, the, the ranch branding. Yeah. God, Jody just loved that. We had so we much fun. We gotta get fun. you back up there again. Oh, I love it, I, I love it, so. Well, John, as always, it's just a pleasure and, and fantastic, and I look forward to getting you back to the ranch. Oh, it'll be fun, I love it, you know. I just love it being with you. If I had to pick one word to, uh, to describe my papa, you know, to someone who had never met him before, I think the word I would choose is devoted. He's devoted in his life, his family, his horses, the horse training, the people he's working with. So I think, I think that's a good word that kind of sums him up. He is by far the best coach I've ever had. He doesn't matter what sports it, it's in, 
I think my papa loves me because of my personality and how I am. I'm more of the outgoing person in the family. I definitely am funnier than most of the people. It doesn't matter if it's our three-year-old or tennis lessons with, <laughs> with our 15-year-old. Um, but it's really special, and that is what I appreciate the most about John. So if I could say thanks, it wouldn't be for horsemanship. It wouldn't be for teaching me to be a trainer. It'd be, you know, for supporting me in, in everything that I did. But more importantly, it would be the friendship that I have with my dad. I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to just stand back and say, thank you, John. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for taking the time to take a 15-year-old kid's phone call in the middle of the night and to treat that phone call like it was the most important call you've had all day. Thank you for taking the time to direct somebody's steps so that they could achieve the dreams and goals they had, for being the advisor and the counselor that allowed that person, me, to end up where I am today. Thank you for taking the time to love those around you. Thank you so much for joining us. We always enjoy having you here, and it is such a pleasure. John, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> You're it is a pleasure to have you here. Thank you guys for being friends of ours, and until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. For more information about Ken McNabb Clinic's appearances and products, visit KenMcNabb.com. One true horse, a perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse. Gonna take a ride on one true horse.